Look at your bills to pay It shakes you up right from the start Oh, but it's a sunny day And good things are gonna come your way If you just play it straight on from your heart Oh, but there's just nowhere to go Cause somebody told you so But those lies are going around Yeah, you know You got a choice, you see It's not your destiny, no Nobody's holding you down When you beautiful that is play it from your heart wherever you are tonight if you're feeling lonesome you just reach on out put that love into your writing we can change the world yes if you take a stand you'll find a promised land it's been there right from the start oh all those things you want to be yeah Tell me what you see, you know what, it is not that hard. Cause you know what to do, comes right from inside of you and it should never tear you apart. No, 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 just play it fair and square. You're gonna get your share, your time ain't really that far. When you who, oh you Vote, vote love, vote loud and proud. Give it up every day. Uh huh. No, don't let nobody turn you around. Just one foot in front of the other. That be proud, y'all. Keep on shouting out, yay, love, love, love of one another. Helping out our brothers and sisters. We know a change is gonna come, baby. But we gotta help her move it along. Yeah, don't let nobody stop you now. Nobody turn you around. Play it straight from your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. You who you got to who oh, oh, did y'all did y'all look at those stars shining up above? Oh, come on, look on to your heart and show everybody you love, you love, you love, baby, yes, and you are a voice for humanity, you do it, you play in the street for your heart, come on, each and every week, baby, all the things we see coming right from your heart, we got love to share, things to do, yes, it's up to me. It's up to you, yeah. So come on, say hi to one another and let us know you're here. From Brooklyn to Nashville, Seattle, and right clear. You, 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 you. You're in for a big treat tonight, y'all, because Caroline Aiken is here. Oh, yeah, Amy Ray, I know Caroline from years back. Playing straight in Columbia, South Carolina. My goodness, I'm from South Carolina. From your heart. Yeah, yeah. Straight from your heart. Oh, yeah. So people from all over. There's somebody from Tennessee. Woo, it's good to see everybody. We're getting all in, in there. Oh, man, it's just great to be here with y'all. I know we've got a bunch going on. Caroline and I got our first, I got my first review in an American Songwriter magazine, and our names are side by side. So I thought, oh, who is this girl? So I checked her out. She's from Georgia, and I'm from South Carolina, living in Tennessee, and now I'm in Texas. And you know what? It's all about the same, except the beach is prettier in California. <laughs> but anyway. Well uh, from from California, I'll jump in here. And you guys, that's Leanne Atherton. She's our minister of music on a weekly basis, and she has brought such. Um, she has really helped us, defi you know, kind of um, define what we're about and and bring it to life in a way that that Kari and I had envisioned it 
and and Leanne came along and helped us like bring it to life and keeps coming back and helping us week after week. So thank you so much for all you've done all year with us, um, Leanne, and, and we're looking forward to what the future holds as we continue to build this incredible coast to coast community um, of where we're nurturing volunteerism. And um, so we'll catch up with Leanne in just a few minutes. And um, my name is Scott Bramer. Um, I am, let's see here if we can, there I am, I, I think that's me. <laughs> um, so you guys, um, we have an incredible night for you. Um, Envoys for Humanity, basically think of us as kind of a, um, a, a the volunteer funnel. We wanna be the, the, we wanna help people get into that funnel by making the, 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 the first part of it easy so we can um, you know, get more volunteers involved um, through that, the, into, the, into the funnel pipe. And uh, that, what is that, that funnel, what does that look like? It looks like fun, joyful, attractive things, community, support, art. And, um, and that's what we've been providing in these Zocalo Zooms all year long. And um, so as the stars line up here um, uh, at the end of the year with uh, the great convergence, of uh, Saturn and Jupiter um, and the solstice. And it, occur it occurred to me today, we have um, everybody who is um, on our bill tonight, Amy Ray, your name starts with an A. And then we have Alex who is on live painting, starting with an A. Um, and then we have, of course, um, Leanne Atherton, whose last name starts with an A. And we have Caroline Aiken, whose last name starts with an A. And both of those women, Caroline, and Leanne are both in cities that start with an A being Athens and Atlanta. So as our good friend, Mary Gaucher said to us during the sound check, um, that is the A team. So with that, I turn it over to um, another member of the A team, my co-founder, um, Kari Ramirez. No A in that name. Well, she's got an A in there, but it doesn't start with it. And she is- that, that, was, that was a great bridge. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hi everyone, my name is Kari Ramirez and I'm the co-founder of Envoys for Humanity and it's another Tuesday night. Um, so excited to be here. Thank you, Leanne. Um, just the way you weave your words into what's happening in real time is, is magical, so I love it. Um, so I'm going to talk real quick just a little bit about postcarding business. That's one of the reasons that we are here um, is to write postcards. We are currently reaching out to young Black voters in Georgia in rural areas that um, may not have all of the, the information coming to them constantly like they might get in, in the bigger cities in the urban areas. Um, so we are specifically reaching out to that, that um, data point, that set of, of individuals um, and, and making sure that they get out the vote. So we're sending them information, giving them website, giving the early voting dates, giving the phone number and, um, and just encouraging them to get out there and vote because we all know how important um, these two Senate races are. And there's also, which is a little well known is another, there is another person on the ballot, Daniel Blackman. We added him to our postcards. He's a very amazing dynamic um, candidate that's running for public service commissioner. So that's another one that's on the ballot. He's a Democrat. So we're telling everybody, urging everybody to vote for all three, um, all straight down the ticket. Um, and so we're gonna make a difference and we're gonna do whatever we can to make sure that happens. Um, so postcarding, if you're a veteran writer and you've written with us before, you know the drill and you can start writing at any time if you need more addresses, everything, thank you Brandy is in the chat and we'll put that all throughout the, the um, evening. So at any time that you need them, then you can get addresses. If you're new, then um, fill out the form and we will get you addresses. Everything will be sent via email. And there also is a quick slide presentation for anybody that would wanna just click on that link and it would give you kind of ideas on, on what to write and how to write, but all that is also included in the email. Um, so I wanted to put out numbers really quick cause it's just fun before we get on to the, the really fun part. So we've we started writing to Georgia on November 10th. So a little over what a month and 10 days. And so, so far as of a couple of hours ago, so now the number is bigger, is um, 
we're at 114,602 postcards. So almost 150,000, 115,000 postcards written in a little over a month, which is crazy. And the whole general election since we started this in June, because um, we did write to Texas, voters in Texas, North Carolina, Florida, and um, Michigan, we have written a total of 189,345 postcards. And just because we're so close to the 200,000, we really want to hit that mark. So we have what, uh, just around 11,000 left, not even quite that, which is very possible to do um, within the week. And so if you can write postcards, um, get those out and reach voters, we are excited to, um, yes, please, uh, and make sure you, thank you, Randy, um, make sure you check your, your junk box if you have put in a request and just make sure it didn't go to spam. We have changed our email address. Um, so make sure you check in your spam box. And we're also excited to announce that we went automated. So we have a um, system that we have built internally by one of our envoys, um, Scott Wolf, which um, he is a student at Stanford and he created magic. Um, and so it's automated. So if you're a verified writer and you've written with us before, you can literally get addresses within minutes um, because auto takes over and, and does everything. Um, so it's incredible. So a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of exciting things coming um, around the bend. So let's get to that 20,000. Let's celebrate on Tuesday that we've written over 20, 200,000 postcards um, all across the country. So let's do it and we can do it together. Um, so on that note, I, we have an incredible artist tonight. I'm very excited about um, Alex Beard. I have seen his work one other time. And when Scott told me that he was gonna be joining us here, uh, I was just over the moon. So Alex, thank you so much for being here. Alex is a, um, I love this term, abstract naturalism style. Um, and your work is just, is just really incredible. Um, you, I'm gonna put all your information in the, in the chat, um, but you have just a breadth of, of talent. You've, you've published, you've produced videos, you do art. Um, you have a foundation called the Watering Hole Foundation that um, helps endangered wildlife. So you are just a well-rounded person. So hello and, and welcome officially to our Zocola Zoom. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm great, thank you. It's always a delight to be with you all. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a nice of you to give me such a, a lauded introduction. I'm really just a doodler and an enthusiast. So tonight uh, I'll be doing that while you all write your postcards. I, the last time I did this, I did a round canvas and the idea was in that case, it was trying to get people to register to vote in Texas against Trump. And so the idea was what goes around comes around. And I think we're all seeing that that is in fact coming to pass. Um, I'd like to point out by the way, that uh, this is so hugely important in the history of the world. I've been thinking about this for the last month or so. In the history of the world, I can't think of a single other example where an autocrat has to leave at the height of their power because the will of the people says, no, thank you. Well said. It's really an extraordinary, it's an extraordinarily proud moment to be an American despite, you know, what we read about every day. So good for all of us. Yeah. Um, tonight, I cheated a little bit and I started with a gesture in advance so that it could be dry. And I'm very interested, you mentioned abstract naturalism. So I'm interested in the intrinsic way in nature that things move. And what I mean by that is, why is the spiral in the seashell the same shape as the arms of the entire galaxy, the winds of a hurricane and the divine proportion, right? It gives you some sort of indication of the interconnectedness of all things. And so starting with a truism like this in the case of a spiral, I think that great things, hopefully in this case, come from simple, simple measures and simple strokes. And so I thought that was kind of a nice metaphor for what we're doing tonight. Real accomplishment starting from just a very simple gesture that's in tune with the truism of the way that things in nature naturally want to be. So if that's not heady enough for you, come back to me in an hour and I'll think of something else. <laughs> I love it. Um, that actually gave me chills. So, so that, yeah, that you, you can just feel that 
the way everything is interconnected. That, that's very awesome. Um, well, we will be spotlighting your work all throughout the night and we're gonna, we're gonna check in with you and um, you know, kind of get your take on what you're feeling as, as the night continues and we have music and, and inspirational speakers and stuff like that. So Alex, yeah, so I'm gonna let you guys do your thing and, yes. and I'm gonna turn my back to you and start working on the painting. And if you want me to say something, just say my name and I'll unmute myself and I'll start yammering. I love it. Perfect. Thank you so All much, right. Alex. We really appreciate yep. you being here. Pleasure. All right. We're going to continue the magic now and we're going to have Leanne come back on and give us a couple of more songs. Leanne, I love you. Take it away. I love y'all too. This is, it's a Christmas song I wrote. Uh, it was inspired really by um, a, an acquaintance of mine who had become homeless and he was standing on the corner begging for money and it was Christmas time so Watch out, you better not cry, you 
better not pout, I'm telling you why. Love is gonna show us the way. Santa Claus is coming to town too. We'll have treats under the tree. We'll have, if you even have a tree, I put up a tree. Even though I'm going to be alone, I thought, just celebrate. Celebrate life. We are in this together. You are never alone. And uh, having this together every week to for social change and for justice is very powerful. And we can change the world. Do we got time for another song? Or are we ready to call it on to the next thing? Should we do another Christmas song? One more. Mm, well... Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party. Ha! Oh, yeah. Mistletoe hung where you can see if a couple wants to stop. Oh, oh. Rocking around the Christmas tree, let the Christmas party ring. Later, we have some pumpkin pie and do some caroling. Oh, you will get that sentimental feeling when you hear what we hear. Voices singing, let's be jolly. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Rocking round the Christmas tree. Let the Christmas party ring. Come on, girl. Every little girl and boy you know. Here they go dancing. Yeah, let's dance. Oh, baby. Come on, dance, dance, dance around. Christmas tree is decorating and we can sing out loud. Oh, yes, you know, you will get a sentimental feeling when you hear oh, voices singing. Let's be jolly. Come on, deck the halls with boughs of holly. Rocking around the Christmas tree, baby. You are so beautiful. We are going to change, change the world in a new old fashion way that's right postcard writing Woo! Wow. <laughs> you are precious leanne atherton you're always so wonderful and inspiring and it's great to have you <laughs> thank on you jesse these Zocalo Zooms, <clears throat> and it's great to be in your house with you. I think one of the one of the unbelievable privileges of um, being able to connect via Zoom is kind of visiting somebody in their house, and it's wonderful to uh, to be welcomed in and kind of get a sense of where you live. And you know, I, I do this writ large sort of thing where we get to put you all on gallery view, and I'm just looking at everybody. And uh, we want to thank everybody for being part of this. And um, I don't know, it just really feels connected, you know. So it's a cool deal. And thank you for being with us once again. And um, you've got yourself muted. I want to introduce Caroline Aiken now. I know Caroline was uh, on the call with us last week, um, but we didn't get a chance to talk. And um, let me see if I can spot you on the big picture view. Let's see, hmm, not so much yet, but wow, we have we have lots of pages tonight. That is amazing. Um, while we're waiting for Caroline, there she is. There you are. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and thank you for inviting us into your house. Where are you? I'm in Athens, Georgia. Epicenter. Very nice. Truly, truly. Today we had uh, the news came down that they um, rejected the the uh, GOP's try to uh, get rid of about three hundred and fifty thousand votes in Georgia. They have just rejected it. It's amazing that the Republicans tried to invalidate three hundred and fifty thousand votes in one hundred and fifty nine counties. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I mean, it's just an ongoing battering ram yes, situation. Yeah. So we're here to we're here to fight back. We're here to get people out in Georgia. Can you feel enthusiasm on the street? You know, I, I suspect that um, there's a lot of people talking. Well, I haven't been on the street, but I have. Yeah, well, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot. I mean, we just. Uh, uh, 
grabbed back an election for a district attorney here that uh, Kemp tried to steal from a, an unconstitutional law that was he passed in 2018, which the Georgia Supreme Court uh, deemed unconstitutional. And we were just able to vote for our own district attorney, Deborah Gonzalez, the first Latina in the I think in the country, DA in the country, I don't know, but it's, it's epic and uh, we're winning on so many levels because the, uh, the people are paying attention. Well, and I want to say that if Georgia can turn blue, I believe Tennessee can too. Hello. Right here next to you. And, you know, here's hoping that, uh, that those days are not far. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Do you want to talk a little bit about how long you've been doing this and the places it's taken you? How long have we ha do we have? <laughs> I mean, I've been playing music for 51 years professionally. Um, I, I started at 14 years old, and that'll tell you how old I am. Um, but, um, I mean, it's taken me around the country and around certain areas of Europe and, and the world, South America, and it's just been the best. Like, I used music as a, uh, an excuse to travel. <laughs> it took me, it you know, and I learned uh, about different people. I think the best, uh, what's, the, what's the, the saying, travel will uh, get rid of ignorance? I, I forget the saying but i think it helps if you can get to know different peoples and such but um they're really open your mind but it was just such a it's been such a great run I, I, i'm very lucky i'm very lucky i would say that the difference between being a tourist and being a traveler is how open-hearted you are to what you're experiencing when you go everywhere and you become part of it and it becomes part of you and that comes with you the rest of your life. It's really a blessing. And I was mostly alone, um, which I think is an is a uh, unique way to travel. Most people, you know, don't travel alone, and um, it it really um, it, it provided me insight. Whereas if I was insulated, um, I wouldn't have had the same interactions with people. Well, we love having you here, and we love that you're going to play for us. Caroline Aiken, Thanks, Zoom. It's great to be here, y'all. Um, Leanne, I love you, sweetheart. It's great to hear you again. <laughs> I was telling how when I first became aware of you was when uh, we had an interview, an interview, a um, review in American Songwriter, and I saw your name beside mine, Atherton Aiken. I thought, I got to check her out. And then, <laughs> you know, to, to have the circle keep going and going and be able to have you always available for advice and encouragement, it's amazing. Well, thank you, and your backyard boogies are like the best, and I've been honored to be part of that too, so thank you for that. <laughs> so I wrote this song with a bunch of uh, kids that I was teaching in music camp, mm. and We fought a lot, then we talked a lot. First thing that came to mind was how to see the sunshine, how to watch the grass grow, how to watch the water flow in the air and the trees and everything around me makes me happy. Takes me to that sacred space. Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder give in to the sun and light up the sky. Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder give in to the sun and light up the sky. That's okay 
washes all the worries away I look around me and I think it's so yeah There's so many things I want to know The sun is really bright today Let me light your way from the blinding light to the stars at night Come on people we don't have to fight Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder give them to the sun and light up the sky Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder get into the sun and Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder give them to the sun and light up the sky. Mysterious wonder when rain and thunder get into the sun and light up the sky. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute, I have to go back to the gallery so I can see you guys. All right. All right. Mysterious wonder. Let's see. I was going to do next uh, this one. A friend of mine named Boo Ray out of Nashville. Boo Ray wrote this song, and when I heard it in a songwriter in the round, I asked Boo Ray if I could record it because... Uh, it meant so much to me, and uh, I want to send this out to my daughter. She is uh, uh, doing great, and this song was uh, was uh, dedicated the album to her, Sarah Page Dukes. This is called "Broken Wings Heal." <laughs> Yeah. 
broken wings here. Yay, it sounded so it sounded really good, really good, Caroline. I want you to try maybe backing off on the um the vo uh, maybe the gain or the volume. I'm not sure which. Again, a little distortion out of the guitar. Okay. Okay. So we have a band here in Georgia called Mother's Finest. And uh, Moses Mo, the guitar player, and I wrote this song together. This is called We're Having a War. <laughs> Hold your hand up, Scott, if it's uh, not sounding great. Break out your guns, let's see some action. Don't lie, we both want satisfaction. Ashes, ashes all fall down. I can see the stone look in your eye. There's something about aggression that gets you high. When the smoke whirls on fire, I look at you, you look at me, eyes wide open, go, but just can't see. It's hard to do it with cold game. Just yesterday our enemy was a friend Ashes, ashes all fall down <laughs> Watch out for the sound you heard behind you A temporary silence will refine you Where the smoke whirls on fire Coming to you, <laughs> just around the corner, coming through you. Where the smoke the world's on fire. just been such a surreal time um, to get to play for you is like the greatest honor and thank you for writing postcards thank you for your energy coming to Georgia uh, I thought about leaving Georgia but I said I believe in Georgia. I love Georgia. I'm from Georgia. I'm 
the seventh generation here in Georgia. My people came over here as indentured servants growing crops for King George in 1735. My father's people came here in 1725 to fight the Spanish so the British could have this area. So I didn't want, I, I love traveling around the country, but I love being here. And um, I just can't tell you how grateful I am that y'all are helping us uh, wake, wake everybody up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is a song a friend of mine in California. Her name is Rebecca Troon. She's in Santa Barbara. She's a great musician. And she wrote this little song, and I just have to do it all the time. This is called The Small Planet. Hey, what's the carbon footprint of a bomb? Tell the truth, tell the truth, come on. We sit here in our dim fluorescent light While you're blowing up the planet day and night Hey, what's the mileage on them F-18s? My car don't drink that much gas in his dreams. Now you want to ruin our water with tar sands. So you can blow up some more folks in other lands. But it's a small planet, small planet War is just absurd It's a small planet, small planet Let's all use our words Say, what's the price tag on that big old tank? Did it make a lot of money for the bank? We got depleted uranium machines. I hope you like uranium with those collard greens. Cause it's a small planet, small planet. War is just absurd. It's a small planet, small planet. Let's all use our words. That's right. Now most of my tax money pays for war. Sometimes I wonder who I'm working for Gonna quit my job, grow vegetables out back Kinda doing that now Don't want no part of killing That's a fact Cause it's a small planet, small planet War is just absurd It's a small planet, small planet Let's all use our words, a small planet, small planet, war is just absurd, it's a small planet, small planet, let's all use our words, all right, now, hey, what's the carbon footprint of a bomb? Yeah! <laughs> All right, y'all have to tell me when it's time for me to stop because I'll do this all night long. Uh, uh, Scott, 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 Scott. Let's see. <laughs> uh, you, got, you got like 15 more minutes. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to play a song on the piano. <sighs> My daughter wrote these words uh, at the age of 12, and she won... <laughs> How's that sound? Sound all right? All right. She won uh, first place in Georgia, third place in the country with these lyrics.
worry about the future I had it all planned out When I stopped to realize Something felt quite strange Suddenly I turned around is uh, my first love my first love and this is an uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer tune that I really love to, to play at Christmas Father Christmas Their 
scary story till I believed in the Israelite. I believed in Father Christmas. I looked to the sky with excited eyes till I woke with a yawn in the first light of dawn and I saw him and through his disguise. wish you a brave new year. All pain, anguish, pain, and sadness. Leave your heart, let your road be clear. They said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. Where the will be love a bell and that Christmas tree smell in their eyes. Full of tinsel and fire Full of tinsel and fire Oh, there you go. And then one more. So, this has kind of been a battle cry of ours here. Thanks to Deborah Gonzalez, who is our new district attorney, who is all for criminal justice, reformed criminal justice. And uh, there was a woman that was in jail here uh, for a year without being charged uh, for any crime. Um, and she's out now, but uh, we have some, some serious stuff happening here that is going to change. And I'm very, very hopeful. So I'm going to leave you with this song. This is called Vote of Confidence. And I wrote this with a bunch of German students of mine. And uh, here it goes. Vote of Confidence. And again, thank you all so, so much for being here tonight and uh, supporting us here in Georgia. Ossoff, Warnock, Blackman, Public Service Commissioner. We have got to have people in office who have a conscience, and, and these guys do. So uh, here we go. Uh, vote of confidence, and thank y'all. Thought of confidence, thought of confidence.
confidence, vote of confidence, vote of confidence. Yow! <laughs> oh, it's been great. Thanks, y'all. Caroline Aiken, that was awesome. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing your music with us and sharing your story with us and Thank your you. passion for Georgia. Thanks, Jesse. It, it takes that. We have to care about where we live, you know, and everything is local. So thank you for doing what you're doing. And uh, we hope to make a difference even more, continue to make a difference. And uh, I know the postcarding is going on and um, we're, we're bound to determine to get to 200,000 postcards. Speaking of making a difference. <laughs> And that's Kari and team and all the folks that are on. And uh, thank you all for just sticking to it and doing it every single week. And, and uh, you know, I think that this will continue even after this election and we'll just keep going. We'll just keep rolling because uh, the midterms will be coming. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check back in with Alex Beard. I love, love what you're producing. And um, every time we uh, we bring you on screen, I look to see how many birds I can count <laughs> in your art. It's just amazing. Uh, thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Ooh, we're getting some color. Very nice. What a, what a pleasure that was listening to that great music while I'm sitting here doodling away in the studio. We love that. Yeah, look at really this. Cool. Look at this. It's almost like there's a, a family of birds here. Well, you know, birds of a feather, right? I mean, we're, we're going for some sort of loose metaphor here. So <laughs> it seemed to me like it made sense. Well, plus, I mean, not that it's a partridge, but certainly. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> we could go down that road if you like. <laughs> the, uh, I was thinking while I was painting and listening to the music and everybody's doing the postcards and uh, somebody was interviewing me the other day about, I live in New Orleans, right? So um, Louisiana is represented here as well through the South. And they were asking me why I lived in New Orleans. And I've given so many crappy answers over the years um, that all sort of are very self-referential. You know, I like it here, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it occurred to me that the reason that I live in New Orleans is because it's as close to the backstage of the Muppet show as I can find in the United States, right? There's a certain, certain ethos to the chaos and the bohemia and the performance and everybody working together and um, Waldorf and Statler, you know, cracking from the balcony and it all kind of comes together here in New Orleans. And I'm a, a bit of a hippy dippy, right? I mean, I grew up in the 1970s and was always raised with this idea that together we can all make a difference. And, you know, the commune idea has become uh, sort of caricatured, but there's something to it, right? I mean, something that everybody gets to do what they can do to help participate. And tying all of this together into politics and postcarding to try to, you know, make our, our, the backstage of our collective Muppet show a little more organized. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be a part of. It makes me uh, feel like now 50 years down the road here that um, the, the lessons that we were taught as kids, uh, we're implementing them now in a, in a, in a sort of a postmodern technological world, but with tried and true old fashioned technique. And, uh, you know, it's just a great pleasure to be a part of. So um, that's my there's, two cents for now. There, there's something to be said about cooperation. Not everything is a competition. Not everything is about elbowing each other out of the way to get somewhere. Some of it is about the collective that we can be part of and we can take strength and drink deep from. And that's what this is. And, you know, I'll tell you, I actually think that competition, you know, we live in a capitalist society, so fine, competition is part of the backbone of that. But if you're talking about life, the universe and everything, then competition is actually not such a great goal, um, right? I mean, I, 
when people ask me about how I go about my own artistic career, I, I emphasize the point that I'm not in competition with my peers, but rather in collaboration to try to bring our collective understanding inch it forward so that, you know, as, as, as my children grow up and their children grow up, that we have a slightly better sense of who we are in relationship to our surroundings um, and how do we better the human experience? Uh, because ultimately, you know, the, the corpus in which we're all trapped, that organic mess that holds us back, but also gives us great, um, a, a vessel for enlightenment. Uh, the competition is, is good for the individual, bad for the collective. Um, and so, you know, this sort of falls into that category too, working together for, for the greater good. It's nice to be part of. Well, I also like that your love of wildlife and philanthropy have come hand in hand and that your foundation advances that. That's also ultimately very self-referential to the species. And what I mean by that is if we destroy the natural world, don't think that we're not animals too. Uh, very hard to live in an unbalanced environment. And of course, we live in an increasingly unbalanced environment. And I would argue, in fact, I know that there's a political message here to what we're doing tonight. And I would argue that the, that the building blocks for how we got to where we are in terms of Trumpism and xenophobia, et cetera, is because of that <clears throat> unequal balance of ourselves in relationship to our surroundings, a lost connection to nature. And, you know, ultimately, we're kind of panicking. Um, we're panicking because the warren is too full and the weather is too hot and you know, all the rest of these things. You put too many rabbits in a warren, they stop reproducing and they start eating each other. Right? And, I, uh, and, and I kind of feel like uh, so much of how we've gotten to where we are is because we're eating each other's tails. Um, and I think that roots back to an inability to see the stars at night, an inability to know what direction, you know, the sun rises and sets in. I mean, uh, just the most basic, simple things that for the entirety of the existence of human beings on the planet up until the last 20 to 30 years have been given that you would know them, all of a sudden we don't know how anything works. Um, and that's uh, very, it, it, it's very disassociating from being able to get up every morning and go out into a world with some semblance of confidence that you know where you stand. Um, and so, you know, that, so this, that's sort of a very circuitous route to get us back to the environment and um, our responsibility to try to take care of each other and, and, and uh, our fellow species and forests and oceans, etc. cetera. Um, but ultimately it all fits in the, same, in the same boot. And I would then argue that the reason it's so important for those of us that are not in Georgia to be supporting Ossoff and Warnock in Georgia is so that we can have a government who understands that it's not just how much can you make and how much can you grift, but rather how do we try to solve some of these great global challenges. We were talking earlier about, uh, and I'm going on a little bit, so I'll get back to my painting in a second, but we were talking a little bit earlier about the difference between a tourist and a traveler. Uh, and I was always raised to understand that travel is the best education. And the thing about that is not just that you see more things and know more facts, but you meet more people who have dissimilar backgrounds than you do. And you learn that you are all in fact alike. Um, there's something extraordinary about the, the ethos of the traveler where you are, when you're on the road, welcomed into people's homes, uh, graciously and generously and uh, enthusiastically. And that then in turn, the responsibility falls to us when we're at home to welcome those on the road, right? And that can be taken as, a, as an individual's mantra, but it should also be taken as a nation's mantra. Um, and so again, back to why it's so important. Uh, now, by the way, 
I'd like to say that I'm not just a New York Democratic progressive liberal living in a blueberry and a cherry pie in New Orleans, right? <laughs> I mean, I am a bit of those things too, but I also believe that it's important to have a government where the other side's voices are heard and where the, uh, the rights of the minority are also respected, but not if it's in the context of, of, of obstruction for so as to break the system to be able to game it. And the, the McConnell doctrine is that, obstruction to game the system, as opposed to constructive contribution from the minority's voice. Um, so, you know, I wanted to just make that distinction that it's not, that what we're doing here is not just a hippy dippy left wing uh, thing, but rather trying to rejigger the balance in our political system so that uh, we can, you know, look each other in the eye and move forward. So power is not the goal, you know, doing good by people, using what we can to make lives better is the goal and not just, you know, using the power to stay in power, which is- No, really for sure, life is hard, man. I mean everybody has their own their own cup of soup that they've got to drink uh, and they're all full of bugs right so you know life is hard enough as it is without trying to make other people's lives difficult to enrich ourselves it's uh, it's so short-sighted and foolish um, and uh, I you know it would be nice if we could uh, thinking about Christmas obviously it's about to be Christmas and Christmas songs and then in turn, New Year's. And over the years, I've thought about that. Obviously, Christmas is a Western convention. Uh, and, you know, for example, in India, they're not celebrating Christmas in the same way, or in China, they're not celebrating Christmas in the same way. The same is true with New Year's, right? Of course, because in New Year's, uh, the Chinese have a different calendar date for when New Year's is than we do. But those, th those two dates, Christmas and New Year's, do tend to be global pauses where everybody goes home and takes a breath and it seems like the news on christmas is not news of war the news on new year's is not news of poverty uh and and destitution and forgetting about that part of our population but rather news of hope and rebirth um and so it's all that has always been to me the thing that's so special about this time of year is that uh, even when things are not going great, we do have that sort of global pause where we're all of us celebrating the same bank holiday. Uh, and so there's something quite nice about that. I love the piece of it. And thank you so much for sharing. Alex Beard will continue to watch you. Create yes, back to my content. birds of a feather. I'm going to mute myself again and let you all carry on. <laughs> it's so great to uh, have art and have music. I want to bring Scott back in and uh, and bring Amy Ray on and uh, let's yes. talk some more activism. Excellent, excellent. Um, that was just so beautifully stated by Alex and it, it leads so nicely into our conversation with Amy Ray. Um, and uh, um, I think that um, the, the way that, uh, you know, initially um, it, it, the, the court it, that brings to mind with regards to Amy's work um, is her work um, has, has founding, um, is one of the founders of, of Honor the Earth and working with indigenous uh, people in this country's wisdom, as well as trying to help to leverage um, music and the arts and media to build resources for, um, for, for their needs. And um, so that is, um, you know, uh, Amy, maybe you could kind of dovetail in on, on some of the thoughts that, that Alex had there with regards to that, that native wisdom and, 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 you know, how that's kind of, um, you know, formed your, your, your work with, uh, the founding of Honor the Earth. 
and I and uh, let's see, your 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 uh, that there mute is still on there, Amy. How about now? There we go. Uh, first of all, Alex is so articulate, and um, that was beautifully spoken. Everything that he said, and it's great to see his art, and um, it's great to be with y'all. It's great to be with you, Jesse, Scott. Um, I yeah, I mean, first of all, this project is so awesome, and it's right. It's just, it's great, like getting people together to do activism, but in a fun way, in a communal way. Um, that's just what I'm all about, <laughs> collaboration and collective action. And that's really what Honor the Earth is about. We found, Emily and I started Honor the Earth with uh, Winona LaDuke, and we heard her speak at an Earth Day in 1991, I believe, and up in Foxborough Stadium, up in Boston, outside of Boston. And... Um, she just, her whole, uh, the lens that she saw through and the paradigm and the way she was speaking about environmentalism was so, uh, I was kind of dumbstruck. Like, like I hadn't, it was a click moment for me for sure. And, you know, it was just this powerhouse of a person as well who, who I believe could just, I don't know, like really talk to a lot of people and distill information in this way that, that those of us that um, need to hear it can really understand it. So we we got involved with Honor the Earth. We started Honor the Earth, Native Activism. We wanted to fund existing groups that were doing activism already and needed more amplification, needed more illumination, needed to build a bridge to the non-Native communities so that those of us who aren't Native can understand what's going on in Native America. And they were winning battle after battle against big corporations. They were setting precedents. They were changing laws. They were lobbying the government in a way that was creative and super effective. And I think a lot of it went unseen um, a lot of times. And they weren't getting that much of a percentage of like foundation money and philanthropy. And the media did not talk about indigenous peoples as much. And so we just felt like we just this is what this is how we want to do environmentalism we want to illuminate these people that are such effective activists and that's really why we we got involved um it's just a grassroots work you know a paying attention to what your elders say working from the community um perspective don't you don't go in as a white person and start running things you <laughs> listen to the community and you listen each community has different needs and every community is made up of a lot of different kinds of people and so you just you sort of listen more than anything and you try to amplify what's being done that's good so it's it's carried on up until now and and still going on right now the um winona is leading um a bunch of people up in northern minnesota that are blocking um line three of a pipeline that is just being built for really no reason um and it's like kind of another standing rock but it's up in northern minnesota and it's the middle of winter and there are people camped along the mississippi river trying to block these pipelines from getting built and i'm going to be you can go to honor the earth dot org and look at look at it but i'm we'll be posting about it in the next couple of weeks because they're basically just camps all up and down the mississippi river and up in the north trying to stop this this pipeline and um it's a it's going to you know, affect a lot of water quality and wild rice beds and quality of the public health issues and also just increases the sort of encouragement of fossil fuels. And we're trying to support um, good energy projects instead of bad energy projects. So that's, that's sort of what we're about. Um, we do cultural restoration, cultural sustainability, agricultural stuff. We do uh, fighting fossil fuels, um, trying to support sustainable energy I mean, language recovery, it's, it runs the gamut um, of things that we support. A lot of youth-oriented stuff as well. So, yeah, and I mean, to tie it in with voting, you know, this, that we've done a lot of get-out-the-vote work in Native country, um, in Indian country for the past, you know, 20 years. And it is just, it's incredible the way it's increased time and time. And finally, when you hear politicians speak, they speak of, indigenous people you know they it, i mean it used to be like you list you know anybody even the most progressive democrat would make a list of all the disenfranchised people and they would never mention indigenous people and it would drive me crazy but this year we have really seen that change and i think that's through 
the the movements of the youth movements and the elders in native activism that have finally made themselves uh, been so strong that they're visible and so now our leaders are are talking more and including the indigenous people and in, when they have conversations and Deb Howland's being nominated for the cabinet a cabinet position for secretary of interior there's just a lot of great stuff going on and I think the native vote was really really help you know help win this election and then my my lady Kamala got in there and I love her so much you know Joe Biden too but Kamala's my my woman so um so I feel really good about, you know, just the youth movements that have started to understand intersectionality and the way a queer activist can relate to an activist who's working on issues of racism and a person when working on migration, Im immigrant issues can be working on poverty issues and, and they can cross, cross over with someone working on anti-death penalty work. It's, it's very... We, we now have understood how to have allies. And I think we're, we're being taught by young movements that that's the way we should be. And it's an old idea, but it's finally coming into the light. And so I think, um, and I think this ties in with just all the help with people are giving to Georgia and trying to get these, these uh, elections to go our way, you know, which is, I mean, it's possible, you know, we can, I think we can do it. And um, it's I, it's incredible actually to be from Georgia and to have this happening is like, I mean, usually we're like the center of so much bad news all the time, you know. And it gets I get um, I get defensive because I'm I'm from five generations of Georgians and I'm always like, don't insult my family, you know. <laughs> but it's we are a dysfunctional state to a certain degree, and and I think um, or we have been, you know. But we've also always had a great dialogue about race and a great dialogue about classism and. And just, it's always out in the open and we are always learning. And so I, you know, the South is, I love the South and um, I love the dialogue in the South. And I love to hear people on both sides of the issues talk, but I can't tolerate racism by any stretch. And so I, I'm, I think that this is an important election because of that. I think race is, is on the ballot, you know, in, in a big way. And um with Daniel Blackman running, and I don't, if you're not from Georgia, this man running for public service commissioner is incredible. I met him a couple years ago. I've been following him. I'm a fan. And um, he's just, he's going, I, he's got to win this public service commissioner election. And then I think he'll go bonkers from there and just go places because he's an amazing man. And he ties we everyone to him. We hosted him um, on a on a meeting last week, and ah. we were blown away. And we turned around and we're like, "What? Oh, I blew it! We didn't have him on our postcarding earlier. We got him on there right away." And um, like you say, the, he is he he is a national treasure. He is. He's one of. I just, the, when I first heard him being interviewed, I was like, "Oh my God! This this guy! Like, I will follow this person. Like, he is so smart, and just his ideas about." you know, having barriers come down and he speaks to people on both sides of the aisle. He's a Stacey, he's like a Stacey Abrams, you know, like he's, you know, when Stacey comes to, I live in a small town in North Georgia, it's very rural, super conservative. But when Stacey Abrams comes and speaks in our town, she speaks to everyone and she changes people. And it's, that's the kind of people we need. You know, we need people that are willing to like speak to people that don't share their same ideas, you know? And yeah, and, and listen to what they have to say, you know, and, and Stacy does that. And I think that's why she's so important to getting out the, she, while she's made getting out the vote such a big thing is that she wants people to be able to voice, have a voice. And this is one way that we can do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Envoys was, was founded um, via Beto's campaign in Texas. And, and it really resonates a lot with, I think, um, uh, you know, I think he learned a lot from what was going on over there um, with respect to, you know uh, the the movement that had been going on, going out and speaking to everybody in every county, and um, and that's what he did, obviously in Texas. And so, well, one before we uh, wrap up the conversation part, Amy, um, just wanted to get just a little insight. I love Southern Mexico. I'm so fascinated by the fact that you've been down there um, a few times working um, with the Zapatistas down there, and wondering if you could, if if there's anything you'd like to share with us about, like just that what what that experience was like. I know it must have taken some really um, serious legwork during these times to to make sure you were aligned with the right people, having your back, you know, and going into an area that's contentious like that, um, with the stakes very high. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, I guess it was the mid '90s. The first time I went down there, uh, Honor the Earth was funding um, some different projects down there with the Zapatistas. Um, one of them was to bring in water trucks to provide some fresh water, and one of them was to help the women with, with a art a collective to stockpile materials because every time they would hike into the villages, they would they the Zapatistas different. Um, indigenous groups kind of live sort of outside of the towns in the rainforest and um, areas and when they would walk into town to get supplies the military would harass them and sometimes they would get raped they would get attacked and so they wanted to be able to just get all their supplies and stockpile them in a place so they wouldn't have to make so many trips we funded some of that stuff and we went down there I think I've been down there two three times and um, I can't I mean the Zapatistas I can't even, I don't even know what to say. I mean, the that movement is so important and it taught me so much about activism and grassroots activism. And um, we were, we were, we felt safe because they, you know, we were surrounded by military and there were helicopters everywhere and all that stuff, but they don't let you come down there unless they know it's going to be safe. I mean, they're very, like, they were very careful about that. And there was a moment when we had to leave because it was getting too dangerous, and so we did, and things like that. Um, I can't, it, it was a beautiful experience. Em, Emily and I played at one point um, in this in this one little village, and they played, and we played, and they had like these generators running that would have lights, and it was like the middle of the rainforest, and we were all playing, and people were dancing, and it was just so beautiful, the experience. I can't even – it's hard to even – I can't believe I was there in a, in a way, you know, like sleeping in a hammock and collecting firewood and hanging out with Subcomandante, you know, David and things like that. So it was, it was like crazy, mind blowing stuff. But those activists, the Zapatista activists, um, the feminism and the um, anti misogyny work they do, and they're so they're pro pro queer, and it's it's an amazing society actually, and you have to be in line. If you're going to be part of it, you have to be in line with what they espouse, which is a, a whole boilerplate of very progressive things. And I just learned a lot. And what, what they really taught me the most is like work in your own area for the, for the greater collective good. You know, you don't need to come, we don't need you to come here and do our work for us. We need you to come here and learn from us and then take it to where you are and do work there. And I think that's, it was a great lesson to learn. So yeah, beautiful thing. It was a special time. Well, one quick plug um, is the is the Rojava movement, Rojava, and and northern Syria. That's a, a part of the Kurdish um, area that expands five different states, and they really created a kind of utopian um, vision that was based on um, an activist named Murray Bookchin out of uh, Vermont. Uh, his work that was distilled by um, Abdullah Ab Ashalan, who's in a Turkish prison for life um, in lieu of the death sentence so that Turkey can stay in the EU. And um, meanwhile, the, his, his vision got, they, they have created this utopia of, of sorts with a, with a bottom up type of, ha have you heard much about Rojava? No, no. Um, and most people have not. And, and so when we pulled out of, out of, um, out of, out of, uh, Syria, you know, uh, uh, quickly um, under Trump, um, that's, that, that was what was in the balance, hanging in the balance was Rojava. And they are extremely progressive, um, anti-misogynist, pro-ecology, and, and that, those are the foundational tenets. But anyway, wouldn't it be nice if some of these, these um, things start to kind of link together around the world as we're facing this um, kind of, uh, you know, creeping autocracy and, and, and whatnot of these uh, dictators from Brazil to, you know, the United States for wannabe, you know, to, um, you know, uh, Turkey and, and uh, beyond. Uh, it's so anyway, I just wanted to toss that out there. I love, yeah, I love that story. That out. That's amazing. Really want to, I want to learn about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesse, want to, want to put a bow on this before, um, we're, we're not going to have Robin with us tonight for the, uh, for the, um, the Georgia hour. We just got the, the Georgia report straight from, from you and Caroline. And, and that was <laughs> yeah. just awesome. And, and Car um, Caroline, yeah, she knows a lot. She's, she's a, yeah, she's, well, she's one of my mentors. So well, we're, say, we so. love <laughs> bringing y'all together and Jesse, I, it, it's all thanks to Jesse for, for connecting us all. 
Well, and thanks, Amy Ray, for joining us tonight. Let's talk music a little bit uh, sure. before we have you play. Uh, are there are there new albums in the works, and what might we see in twenty twenty one? God, who knows? <laughs> uh, God, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm writing. Uh, Indigo Girls are working on a virtual concert to stream, like with the band, and it's it's a it's a piece of work. So it's going to be a long journey. Everybody's recording from their own homes, and it's like you know craziness. So we're working on that. Um, and I'm writing and uh, I'm just doing like, when I finish a song, I send it out to my solo band and they learn their parts and we work on it for like a month, you know, remotely. <laughs> and then we each record in our own homes and the producer that produced my country records, Holler and Goodnight Tender is our producer still. And so Brian and I just, I've got one that came out called Tear It Down. I've got another called Muscadine that's coming out in a couple of weeks that we're done with. We're just mixing it and waiting for the new year to put it out. It's just a simple love song, nothing political. And um, <laughs> and I've got a whole batch of songs I'm working on, and I'm just going to release singles and videos. And uh, at some point, we'll put them all on vinyl and put it out there. But Emily and I are, you know, we put our record out in like May. It's called Look Long, and right, you know, in the middle of the, of the pandemic. And so we're still, you know, we're hoping to tour behind that. When, when we can, when it's safe to tour. And, and then I, I guess we'll make another record. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We're just, you know, we talk all the time. So, so we're figuring it out, but we, we really do want to get this virtual concert done. It's, and it's going to be like just fun little vignettes and interviews and like songs and stuff from guests, you know, guest artists playing with us and things like that. It'll be, it'll be fun. Sounds amazing. And well, yes, we'll it's been wonderful. <laughs> no, seriously. Amazing. It's hard to Figuring know it's it out amazing. In, the midst, in the midst of all of this has been really interesting. Uh, a learning curve for a lot of people, a step up of technology. and But what's emerging is, again, the humanity comes through it. And that's been so essential. So thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I mean, I am seeing like, so many people online that I never get to see live and like seeing so many, you know, shows and interviews. And it's, it's, uh, it is cool in that way, you know, but, oh, what a learning curve. Yeah. I had to learn how to record things digitally and I'm an analog person. So I was like, wow, <laughs> it's been rough. But There's a lot of that good. going on. I'm glad I know now. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And, you know, there'll be new stuff and new pieces of equipment and, you know, new lighting and, you know, yeah, so yeah. It, it's ongoing. It's an ongoing, ongoing adult education. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Would you play for us, please? I will play. I will play. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll just play. Do you want me to just play for a while? I mean, is yeah. That... yeah, just yeah. play just people it... a postcard. Okay. Uh, thanks. It... I, I want to. Th I just want to give a shout out to the postcarders out there, and I can see y'all. Thank y'all for doing that. Um, it's it's good because it does remind people. People actually, they think about voting and then sometimes they forget. So um, getting mail is uh, really important. Um, I went and voted today. And I live in an area that goes about 20% Democrat and 80% other stuff. And um, they know me when I come in. Wish me luck. Um... But anyway, I'm just going to play some tunes because uh, just think of it as a little background entertainment for y'all. Alex is going to be doing his artwork and I'll be playing some songs. I'm practicing for the game that matters in the sky, in the sky. I'm singing for all my friends and
called gig that matters um looks good alex really good i'm gonna play uh a little raucous tune called sure feels good i don't have a cold i have allergies and uh 13 animals right now so all right, I just got a tune for this. So this this song, um, I wrote this after um, this this group tried to organize a. Well, they were trying to get the best of the town and posted this uh, <laughs> this sign over one of our historical buildings that said historical meeting place of the Ku Klux Klan and um, well they got a rise out of us because we all showed up a couple hundred of us showed up in town and protested and um, it was about the flag the confederate flag and all that jazz but um, I find that um, I I just I love I loved the south and I'm always trying to understand how to be more understanding I guess is the best way to put it Get your text about 3 a.m. When I cross back over the border again Bye-bye, Canada, hello, USA The lefty saw make a lot of sense Sometimes it's nice to feel good in my skin But I trade it all for some southern hospitality I know that you don't Get back. 
inside me dancing out there <laughs> good dancing <clears throat> that's holland she's our mascot it's great to have a dancer my uh my seven-year-old's upstairs hopefully asleep possibly asleep probably not <laughs> um all right i'm gonna do uh I don't know what, what y'all want for entertainment. If you want like fast songs or if you want like some slow, I'll just do whatever. I'll just do some stuff. Um, okay. I'll do this. It's a, a quiet, it's a quieter song. Come and sit down at this table. Where we share all of our food Where we hug you till we're nothing But a shell of what we knew Let me count the ways I love you And the way hurt you too let me hang there in the balance I would die to be a new cause it's true most of the time I'm treading water with no sign Keeping my head just high enough to holler If you believe I believe too And it's true I'm scared of dying I Let it shape me through and through I don't take much stock in heaven If I can make this right with you Let me reckon with my blessings Let me find my way to you Because I hate Afraid of living, I never say I got nothing to time treading water with no sign keeping my head just high enough to holler if you believe and I believe
a little, I want to do a little gospel taunt song. seeing y'all's comments <laughs> awesome awesome stuff uh, let's I'm gonna do one for Nashville Jesse Scott <laughs> Jesse Scott my friend in Nashville Oh, Tennessee. Tennessee can go. They can go blue sometime, I think. I thought they had more potential than we did, actually. But uh, you never know how the chips are going to fall. It's, it's all about turnout. It's all about voting. I drive all night just to sing in Nashville.
jogging in the back of the bar Honey, I don't mind <laughs> But it don't feed my soul funny song to sing when you're not touring <laughs> but it's good because it makes me appreciate how good it's going to feel to play a show out there all right i'm gonna do a um a newish a new song i um heard about this great group and um Alabama called Project Say Something and they're they're near they're near Muscle Shoals in a town called Florence, Alabama. And um they've been working on dismantling racism for a long time, years, and and more of, of late they were working on trying to get a uh, Confederate monument relocated from their courthouse square um in Lauderdale County to uh, like a confederate cemetery or someplace more appropriate and I met these activists and they're just <clears throat> so inspiring and I wrote a song after that kind of for them really um, just about just from my perspective and I grew up just really embracing all these symbols of the south and you know my little rebel flag and my little, uh, you know, I was just really into like Southern rock and the Confederacy and <laughs> I, had, I was an idiot. I had no idea what, what was, I had no idea. So anyway, um, this is kind of from me, reformed, trying to reform person and thanking them. Say I miss your ways, but not like that. Dog whistling fool of a king. Don't you know that old Dixie land is more than dirt roads and simple ways? Tear it down on. Tear it down that ragged cross race. I don't guess that we deserve all this. The beauty and the light. Where the firefly returns in June As dusk sings her lullaby All the lives that fertilize The manifested hand The human bondage provides the bounty of this land tear it down or tear it down and drag it cross of Kid in old 
about cinemas Watching Gone with the Wind Tradition runs the core of me And a song of South Whistling Dixie again tune lived and breathed in me and it wants to live again we must fight with all our might to kill that racist in to tear it down I long to be Here lies slavery Cool All right um I think I have time for one more So I'm going to get my mando out I'm do a little song about Dwayne Almond <laughs> One of a one of the things we can be really proud of in the South is that we birthed Dwayne Almond. He came on up from way across the edge. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us thank you for you. the music you've given to us thank you for your activism it's all good and uh let's all work together and make a difference in georgia <laughs> yeah man thanks to all the postcarders we really appreciate the help here and uh thanks to alex beard and uh i should i should mention uh the watering hole foundation too which is alex's group and uh Thank him for having that. Looks beautiful, Alex. Awesome. 
Thank you to Scott Bramer and um, Kari, thank you. And um, I see Leanne's muted, but thank you, Leanne. And, and Caroline Aiken, it was good to share the screen with Caroline. She's a dear friend. I mean, gave us, really gave me and Emily one of our first shots in the arm and, and a chance, really. Um, met us when we were super young, hanging out in the back alley of a bar, and uh, she just helped us a lot. So thanks to Caroline Aiken for continuing the crusade and activism and everything that she does. It's so great. Thank well, you. we love it. Love you. Thank you for being with us. And uh, Georgia first, Tennessee next. Yeah. And then the whole South. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Texas, come on. <laughs> We're going to take it back. It's ours. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you all. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, Amy Ray, for Zocalo Zoom tonight. Thank Great you. to see you. And let's check in with Alex. Uh, there are final touches being done and uh, more coloration. <laughs> and uh, I'm loving, I'm loving how that looks. It's just so eternal. Well, you know, the nature of um, these oil paintings is that they take a little while to do. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to work on it over the next couple of days to finish it. And then I'll post it on, uh, you know, the Alex Beard Studio website. And I'll have my guys put it on social media. So if anybody wants that's, that's been watching it start, wants to see it finished, uh, you know, look out over the next couple of days and it'll it'll go up. And I don't know what I'll call it yet. I, I do like the the birds of a feather, but I think I've used that name before. <laughs> so... I'm going to have to come up with something else. Maybe we'll call it, you know, Georgia Blue. There you go. <laughs> well, it's been absolutely wonderful uh, being up close with you and watching the art uh, it amazingly developed for the course of this evening. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm amazed at how far it's come from just the, the lines at the beginning. That's cool. <laughs> Well, I enjoyed doing it. It's really been nice being with you all. And I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever you celebrate and a bright and happy new year and all of us moving forward together. So thank you all very much for, uh, for being with me. Alex Beard, thank you for being with us. Scott Bramer, you want to take yes. it? And thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Alex. Um, Alex, we look forward to um, looking um, online and seeing the the outcome there. Your 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 words of wisdom and um, uh, everything that you added has just uh, it really takes our program to the next level. We're extremely grateful. Well, it's very nice of you to say. As I say, it's really my pleasure and my honor to be in such esteemed company. So thank you for having me. Excellent. Well, we look forward to working with you in the in the in the time to come and and supporting all of your efforts there um, through your foundation, as well as your merging of your kind of bliss and your, 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 your occupation, you know, and, and, and that, as I was saying to Kari today, is something that if, if everybody could do, um, we would be in a, a more utopian world. And that's, you know, uh, <laughs> that's, that's something we can all aspire for. Yeah, well, you know, it's so much easier to be nice and it is to be mean. <laughs> right. It takes a lot of energy to be mean. It's impossibly difficult to be mean. <laughs> it's so straightforward and easy to be nice. <laughs> well, thanks for walking that walk for us. And, and um, we are going to um, look forward to next week where we're going to have um, with us, we... What is going on? It's, it's fast and furious. Okay, so next week we are going to have the return of Guitar Phil. He's going to be playing with his band um, out of the studio in Nashville. And um, they will be socially distanced in the, in the studio together. They've done this once for us before. And he recently produced an album for Latasha Brown. Latasha is the founder of Black Voters Matter, and um, she is out of Atlanta, but works all over the South and beyond. Um, and she is one of the most um, passionate, dynamic um, democracy advocates that you are ever going to, to hear. Um, and 
is frequently on um, the cable and uh, you know shows uh, CNN and, and MSNBC, et cetera, and um, just um, so uh, another gifted speaker. And and so you know we're going to move from and and also an artist like uh, like we've had tonight with 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 Alex's. Um, um, thoughts and Amy's thoughts. Um, you know, Latasha um, is a, a, an incredible. As I said, Guitar Phil did the production work for her upcoming album, and um, which is, uh, if I can jump in, it's all Freedom Rider songs. So it, it's it's a, a historically based album, and um, we're going to be able to play a little bit next week um, just by sharing screen, and it's incredible. And Phil produced it, so we're really, really happy to have both of them with us next week. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that is going to be a beautiful thing. Thank you for for setting that up, Jesse. The the national, I mean the the Nashville music scene, and having you um, there on the on the ground. I know you're connected throughout the country, but just um, guitar. Phil is there in Nashville, and and um, tonight we. Um, and that we, we had uh, Jamie Harris and Mary Gaucher in the in the uh, backstage area before the doing a sound check before um, the show um, because Jamie Harris is is our kind of our technical guru and she was helping out she helped out both Caroline and Amy today with their rig to get all uh, dialed in for everybody tonight and it just you know um segueing out of the nashville bit but just you know into the national dimension of our community and our uh, the way we're growing together every week um with um you know we've had now worked with alex a couple of times um as i mentioned mary gaucher and and, and jamie have been on several times and they're helping out others leanne came on first to do a show and she has stuck with us as our music minister now for for um, a dozen or so um, episodes of this, maybe more. And um, it just, um, it, it really, um, you know, it, it warms our hearts to, to see what we have done, our, how, our, how our, our vision has come to, to fruition in so many ways, um, Kari, and if you wanna jump in and, and, and put a bow on that for us. Thank you, Scott. Um, yeah, I think I think we're starting to get a, a slightly. I know I am slight, getting a little um, nostalgic since this is our second to last Zocalo of the election cycle. Um, we're not done yet. We're going to take a moment to breathe and take in everything that we've learned since we've started um, back in December of 2018 with Beto O'Rourke's run for president, or 20, 2018. Yeah, 18. Right. Oh my gosh. Um, by. Yeah, 2000. Yeah. I mean, 2018, 2000. Beto O'Rourke's run for president, and then um, you know reinventing ourselves when he he dropped out in um, on November 1st of last year, and where we are now, and and so we're gonna we're gonna take a moment to breathe and to take all that in, and and to know that you know we're not finished yet, we're just getting started. Um, in our DNA is we want to bring people together, volunteers together, show them ways to get involved, and hopefully it. It, it leads them on to more and rigorous volunteer opportunities and getting involved in their local communities and getting involved nationwide and um, and injecting joy into the process and events like these. And so, so yeah, I think we are, I, I'm feeling a little nostalgic tonight, especially after all this wonderful music and, and talented art. Um, so we still have some work to do in this election. Um, Georgia is still in play. So let's surpass 200,000 postcards written. Um, somebody had asked about deadlines. We're saying and kind of know where your area is and how close you are to Georgia because there is a lot of uh, mail issues, but we have the postcards worded. So even if they technically get there on January 5th, polls close at 7 p.m. So if they get the postcard, it might be like, oh, I forgot today was voting day and they will have several hours to get out there. So, so we're gonna push these postcards out, um, landing them even in a mailbox on January 5th because we want to not leave any stone unturned and reach as many voters as we possibly can. So the 20, we're saying the 26th if you're outside of the Georgia area um, and the 30th if you're in Georgia or you're near um, Georgia where you think it can get there in, in a couple of days. Um, 
So, so let's do it. Um, anytime you want to request addresses, go to envoysforhumanity.org slash postcarding. That gives you information on how to get addresses. Um, it also has a link to our virtual events page. We have one more Zocalo Zoom left um, next week. It's going to be the same time um, as the event was tonight. So please join us. I am right now working on a follow-up email with all the um, links that we've talked about tonight and the artist links and um, candidate links and, and ways to get involved in Georgia. And I will be sending that out. If you signed up through the Mobilize um, page, then I'm gonna be sending that um, out to your inboxes shortly. So keep an eye out for that because it'll give you a whole bunch of information. Um, because even though we're gonna start stop writing postcards, the election isn't until January 5th. So there still are ways to um, uh, work on the election by phone banking. Um, if you can travel safely, if you're within Georgia, you can, canvas. Um, they're also looking for ballot curing. They're ballot curing right now, which I did not know, which means there are people that have voted already and their ballots have been rejected. Um, absentee ballot voted that have been rejected because the signature is off or they forgot to put a date on it or little minor things. And so um, there is a team working phone. So if you're out of state or within the state in person ballot curing right now. And so those links will be provided in that email. And so if you can do that, um, obviously as important as get out the vote is making sure these ballots. And as of yesterday, there was um, 3,350 um, ballots, I think somewhere around there that were rejected already. And think about how close this race is gonna be. So we need to make sure that we are able to reach every one of those voters that have already um, cast their ballot and make sure we get their ballot fixed and get it right so it's counted as a vote. This is going to come down to just a handful of votes. So, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to um, unmute everybody. If you want to unmute yourself and kind of wave goodbye and say goodbye as, as you head out. And thank you so much. Um, I talk about the numbers of postcards. It couldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you, everybody that's writing postcards, that's dedicating your time, your money, um, your, your hand and muscles um, to be able to write all of those postcards. I'm blown away um, by the comments that we receive in the forums and just how many, um, the massive amount of numbers that people are writing postcards. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And enjoy your night. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Happy Thanks. holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, Kari. Stay safe and happy. And thank you, Alex. Thank you. Yes thank, yes. you. yes. thank you for turning us on to Alex Carter family. Yeah. Go Carter family. Yes. Yay Carter.